Ahem, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gays. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Happy Saturday, uh, what is time? Saturday afternoon to all of y'all. Um, I hope you're all having a having a great start to your day, a um, great start to your weekend. Um, uh, don't mind me as I'm figuring out how to <laughs> get to my, my template here. Um, but thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate y'all. Um, so I am going to be talking about my uh, best of worst of today um, for 2023. I'm really excited to finally uh, bring that to y'all. But uh, yeah, so um, I talked about some honorable mentions on my uh on my um on a separate stream but i am going to go over just a few um options uh, just a few of my um just a few of my honorable mentions before i uh dive into the list proper um but oh my gosh you cannot see my face um oh stream oh stream yard you are frustrating me <laughs> but um you know what? We'll just get rid of it. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple of my honorable mentions, and then uh, I'll just go ahead and jump into the list proper. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and um, real quick just talk about the Super Bowl. So, of course, the Super Bowl is going to be a thing. Um, I will say that I'm kind of torn um, as far as who I want to win because I... Um, I, I, I will be the first to admit, I've talked about Taylor Swift a couple times already. Um, I almost on principle, I want the Chiefs to lose <laughs> because, like, I'm a big Patrick Mahomes fan. I'm a huge fan of his, but I also hate the same teams winning over and over again. Um, in a perfect world, we'd be looking at a Baltimore Ravens, uh, Detroit Lions Super Bowl. That's what I wanted, but, uh, we didn't get that shit, unfortunately. So, um, you know, we got the 49ers and we've got the Chiefs. So I'm on the West Coast. Um, I I'm a Panthers fan, so uh probably won't be in the Super Bowl for a minute. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I, I really like Brock Purdy. Uh I, I love the fact that the last pick in the fucking draft um got to a Super Bowl f- before Dak Prescott did. That just kind of warms my that just makes me uh, feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum, so I'm I'm pretty happy about that. But um, I love Christian McCaffrey um, for as many years as he played in Carolina, when we had just nothing around him. I, I'm so happy for him. I'd love for him to get a ring. Um, so really, more than anything, I'm kind of going for the 49ers based on uh, my love for McCaffrey more than my hatred for uh, T Swift and her insane Swifties, but. Um, I really like Debo Samuel. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a big fan of his as well. So, I, I, in a perfect world, the 49ers would win. I can deal with the, you know, the dumb fans just being really obnoxious all off season. But I feel like if you bet against Pat Mahomes, it just seems like you, it never goes well. So I'm going to kind of go from my head over my heart, uh, my heart over my head here. I think the I think the 49ers win. I'm gonna say, hmm, I'm gonna go high scoring game. I think I'm gonna go 31 28. I, I I think the 49ers are gonna win 31 28. So that's what I'm gonna roll with. That's my that's my official prediction. Um, I'll include that here in the uh, description so you can actually check me on that um, when that is the score. Um, but of course, most people like myself, especially content creators. Uh, we're looking forward to the trailers, and there hasn't been a lot of news on the trailer front. Um, I'm assuming we'll probably get a Deadpool 3 trailer, most likely. So I'm excited about that because I want to see what um, you know what Deadpool's official MCU debut is going to look like. Uh, we might get a trailer for uh, Maxine, which is the uh, the third film in the X trilogy, uh, which would be starring um, uh, Mia Goth, which I'd be really excited to see. Uh, I'm really excited to see that. That's actually my my number, I think my number four most anticipated film this year. So hopefully we get a trailer for that. And we might get a trailer for stuff that we're just not even 
uh, aware of. So um, really hyped for that Deadpool 3 trailer, though, that we'll most likely get. So um, and then, of course, Usher. Um, I've been an Usher fan. You know, I, I mean, I've literally grown up with Usher. So I'm excited to see what Usher brings to a Super Bowl halftime show. I always thought the halftime show should be more in like the, you know, should be a little longer. Like I wouldn't mind a half hour halftime show. So I'm actually really excited that um, according to him, the show is going to be longer. So I'm actually excited to see what he brings to the table. I think he's going to open up with the, uh, oh my God. I think that's, that, that'll be what he opens with. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see that show. Um, they've really been crushing it with the halftime shows recently, uh, you know, with uh, Dre, M, Kendrick, uh, Mary J. Blige, Snoop, uh, Fiddy. That's probably my favorite halftime show uh, to this day. Uh, you know, Bruno Mars was a few years back. Uh, he he crushed it. Um, I'm not even a huge fan of Beyonce, but she had an amazing halftime show. Um, uh, Rihanna, um, fucking pregnant killed the halftime show like it's um and usher has this incredible catalog of you know catalog of hit, hits whether it's you know whether it's uh my way whether it's oh my god whether it's uh you remind me whether it's yeah whether it's confessions you know um um yeah he has an incredible catalog so i'm really uh you know loving this club uh little freak i mean you just go down the line it's just kind of hit and hit after you know banger after banger so I'm really excited to see what Usher brings to the table. But uh, yeah, I will actually be giving my thoughts on the Super Bowl um, a little earlier on Monday. I'll be doing my uh, giving my thoughts at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, 9, 9 a.m. Pacific. I'm going to be on the afternoon uh, the afternoon tune. Do uh, the afternoon tune. I'm going to be on their stream tomorrow night after the Super Bowl, uh, assuming I don't. Uh, uh, get to uh, to turnt at uh, at my uh, my buddy uh, Colin's house, but um, yeah, I should be on the afternoon tune tomorrow night. So, all right, kids. So, jumping into the list proper. So, um, I probably saw I, I'm I've been very bad about using my letterbox as far as logging what I've seen. I'm trying to get better about it, but I probably saw at least. I mean, I probably I saw over a hundred films easily last year. Um, I, I kind of fell off a little bit in twenty twenty two. I want to get back to being over a hundred films, and so uh, I actually got uh, so I got back into that. Um, so yeah, I saw over a hundred films this past year. Um, I know people say this every year that oh, this year is such a bad year for film, and oh my god, how can people, you know, still be excited about it and. I don't know what y'all were watching, but I watched an amazing amount of stuff. Um, and there's still stuff that I didn't get a chance to um, to get to. So I might even come on a later, you know, a later podcast and be like, oh, I wish I could have gotten, you know, I wish I could have gotten this film uh, on my list. But I really enjoyed uh, this past year in film. Um, I thought there were some incredible things that came out. Um, I'm going to give just a few honorable mentions, as I mentioned, um, before I get into the list proper. So uh, the Iron Claw, uh, I want to shout out the Iron Claw. I thought the Iron Claw was um, fucking heartbreaking, but it was so beautiful and so well done. Um, what a turn for Zac, Af uh, for Zac Efron, uh, a young man who continues to prove that, you know, he's not just, you know, a Disney kid. He has continued to grow and hone his craft and i think has become one of the best um actors that we have and his his turn in the iron claw is so heartbreaking and so tragic and you just you just want to give him a giant hug um if you want to be depressed even though i think it would be a great double feature i think watching uh, the wrestler and um i think watching the wrestler and the Iron Claw, um, that would be a hell of a double feature. You'd be very sad afterwards, but um, I, I absolutely adore the Iron Claw. Um, I was just looking for that little more umph to kind of push it over the top for me, and I didn't get it, which is personally why it's an honorable mention and not a, a best of for me. I, I, I did feel just a little more, um, and I think partially, too, um, is that I know the story, um, the original story uh so well um 
So I, I was looking for a little more umph that I just didn't get. Um, I think uh, Mara uh, Tierney, who you know from uh, ER, uh, The Affair, and uh, of course is Lisa from News Radio. I thought she did an incredible job, uh, job as the mom. Um, I, I just love her. I, I'm always so excited when I see her uh, when I see her pop up to something. Um, I thought she did a great job. Um, and then, um, oh God, I want my blanket on his name. Um, uh, Jeremy Allen White, who of course you know from The Bear, which is on my list. I will get to The Bear at some point after this month because uh, The Bear season three is back in June. So I'm going to end up uh, definitely getting caught up on that and reviewing it. But um, I, I thought they were incredible. I thought there's, I think you could easily um, nominate them for best supporting actor. Um, I was a little surprised this movie didn't get more, more Oscar love given the the way that um given how well executed the film is my biggest complaint about the film is that the person they got to play rick flair was just i thought they were garbage <laughs> i just i was so confused when i was like that's rick flair that's who you fucking it, it was very weird but um that's really my only gripe uh really with it but if you haven't seen it if you're a wrestling fan um i would encourage you if you have hulu uh, to check out the dark side, uh, the dark side of the ring episode on the Von Eric uh, family, I think that fills in some gaps pretty well. Um, again, it's it's heartbreaking. So if you're not in a mental headspace to watch it, please don't. But I would definitely recommend checking that out when you're feeling able to. So uh, the Iron Claw definitely a high honorable mention for me. Um, Blackberry fucking breaks my heart i could not find a spot for black bear on my list and i was writing for blackberry all year and when i sat down to do my list i i probably revised my list God, probably 35 40 times at least like i just kept going back and forth on certain things and i just i couldn't find a spot for blackberry uh jay burchell playing more of the straight man in this movie um uh in uh, uh mike uh, uh lazardus i think uh, i think bear shell does a, an amazing fucking job honestly in it and um the fact that you think about um jay bear shell as far as being stuff like goon and this is the end and she's out of my league where you know he's very much playing uh comedic the fact that he is able to go more into the straight man line more dramatic uh is something that really should be commended because not every comedic actor is a great um dramatic actor i I know that's almost become kind of a uh almost kind of a um oh my god stereotype um but i thought he did an excellent job and glenn howerton holy shit you want to talk about there may be no one in hollywood that's better at having a freak out than glenn howerton i mean of course you know him from Den- uh, as a Dennis Reynolds from It's Always Sunny, but seeing him just melt down as the walls start to close in, um, I-, I thought was an absolute joy to behold. And and there is a tragedy to it because while um, his character uh, uh, Jim Basile, he's definitely you know a swindler. I wouldn't say he's a con man, but he is he is desperate for this level, this certain level of status, this certain level of success, and. The way that you see their partnership just crumble. Um, I love a good rise and fall story, and I just and man, the fall, the fall is just epic <laughs> when when you get to it. Um, I, I do also want to shout out Matt Johnson, who's in the film and also uh, directed it. He directed the shit out of it. Uh, again, another film I really thought should have gotten. Um, I think Glenn got, Glenn Howerton should have gotten the best supporting actor nomination. I, I think it's act- actually kind of fucking that he didn't considering how great um he is in it i i do think the two um because it came out in like march april i think if it comes out closer if it's out in like september um because i think the oscars i think the academy is just i think they're pretty shitty about that honestly as far as stuff that's out earlier in the year um uh are you there god it's me margaret i think felt that same trap with rachel mcadams where if stuff's out so early in the year, people really do kind of forget about it. And it it's harder to maintain that momentum, you know, from April to, you know, late February, March when uh, voting happens. So 
I was I was bummed for Blackberry. I was bummed I couldn't find a spot for it uh my list, but uh here we are. So uh but Blackberry, please check it out. I think it's streaming on AMC, like AMC Plus, I think is worth streaming. So uh if you have that, uh definitely check it out. I think you can get like a free seven-day trial. So regardless, it's well worth your time. Please give it the attention it deserves. Um, that movie's great. And then I'll throw out uh I'll throw out Three, uh, actually, I'll throw out a couple more real quick. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves fucking rules. Um, I, uh, my partner and I watched it together. Uh, we do a weekly movie night, and so that was our uh, movie one, uh, one week, and we just had an absolute blast with it. Uh, Chris Pine, can we just say that he is the best Chris working in Hollywood? I, I think it's him between this and uh, don't worry, darling. Uh, he is the second best thing about that movie. Um, Florence Pugh being the first. Um, the all three Star Treks, he's excellent in those. Um, Rise of the Guardians, he's great in that. Uh, Unstoppable with Denzel. Um, Unstoppable, if you haven't seen it, fucking is awesome. Uh, train movies, hell yeah, love that movie. Um, uh, of course, Into the Spider Verse, uh, he's great in that. Um, I know I'm forgetting, I know I'm forgetting a couple things. Um, but yeah, he's, he's awesome. Uh, he's absolutely amazing. Uh, he, he's great in horror bosses too, even though that's not a great flick, uh, pine rules. And he's definitely leaning into his, uh, leaning man charm in this movie. And I just, I, I found him just so fun and so engaging. This is the most, um, personality that Michelle Rodriguez has been allowed to show, goddamn probably since fast and furious six like she's like you know she's kind of become a type unfortunately in those films but i i absolutely adored her in this and justice smith knows exactly what his role dictates and he knocks it out of the park and shout out to hugh grant hugh grant has found like a second life in his career playing these scummy <laughs> playing these scummy pieces of shit um acting alongside cgi characters uh he still owes paddington you know a gallon of marmalade for saving his career as far as i'm concerned but hugh grant's great in this um yeah absolutely great film uh please check it out it's streaming on paramount plus um well worth your time and then um uh, let me shout out real quick as well just because i enjoyed the original so much and i can't believe that the um that the sequel improves on it as well as it does uh the wrath of becky um it uh, they switched up directors which admittedly scared me I, I was like oh crap are they gonna just you know fuck the sequel up into oblivion and uh no no uh the original is directed by carrie uh uh Mernion and uh, jonathan millot and this one is directed by matt uh angel and suzanne uh Coutts. Uh, Matt Angel, he's uh, he directed a few things, uh, Hypnotic and the Open House. Uh, same thing with Suzanne Coote. And they come in and they absolutely knock this out of the park. Uh, Lulu uh, Lulu Wilson, um, she's been in some stuff. I think she's a, a, scream, queen, a scream, scream queen. There we go. On the rise. Um, you know her from, oh my god, they did another cop and a half. I did not know <laughs> Uh, she was in Cop and a Half New Recruit, which I'm assuming was straight to straight to DVD. But she was in uh, 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 we, uh, Ouija, uh, Origin of Evil, uh, Ready Player One, Annabelle Creation, uh, and uh, Sharp Objects. But she's a young woman who is just, she's hitting her stride. And this character, they can keep this character going really for as long as they want, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this film definitely sets up uh for trilogy at least um but where this film ends they could get some more mileage out of it i i think a becky tv show would be so easy to do would be so much fun so um i'm i'm willing that to universe but uh shout out to sean william scott who's in it as well who i think is just he's horrifying as this proud boy adjacent um leader in the film and just like in the first film with uh kevin james which is still the best kevin james role by a country mile um him playing a piece of shit go figure uh, but this film 
The tension is so well done. The action is mwah, top notch. Uh, the violence is fantastic. The kills in this are so goddamn good. Um, I love this movie. Um, I, I'm really, really sad I couldn't find a spot for it, but um, Becky and the Wrath of Becky, those are two films that will be on my um, that'll be on my uh, yearly Halloween watch uh, moving forward. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out those honorable mentions. Um, I realize that I don't have anything to drink because <laughs> I was trying to trying to get over here kind of quick. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a little break, about a five-minute break, and I will be back uh, officially with my best of 2023. I will, uh, yeah, I will be right back, y'all. All right, and we're back. Um, so, um, uh, are you really going to do this thing again to me, Twitch? Uh, uh, all right, we might have to just do it like this for a minute. Um, so, um, as I mentioned, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my list of uh, proper. So, um, as far as the rules of the list, um, it was all about stuff that came out obviously last year. Um, so if it's up for an Oscar, it is uh, it is fair game to go ahead and be on the list. So um, that's how I went ahead and broke it all down. Um, yeah. So uh, getting to my getting to my number ten. Um, so I'm I'm cheating. I have a tie. <laughs> um, I have a tie for my number ten. So. Um, I, I kept going back and forth, y'all. I, I, you know, I've talked about it. it. It was really hard. It was really hard to figure out what I wanted to have be number ten. But there are two films that I think just deserve the recognition and deserve the props. So my number, uh, so tied for my number ten, the first film is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, um, the uh, the original film, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. That was my number one film that year uh I, I thought it was an absolutely incredible film this one ranks lower for me just because kind of in the same way that uh avengers infinity war the story's not finished so i do need to see how they stick the landing so um that's why this is <clears throat> this is lower but i mean what am i going to say about this film that hasn't been said already um incredible animation um the gwen stacy mini film where uh, Captain Stacy finds out that she's Spider Gwen is fucking heartbreaking. Uh, better use of color, a mix of so many different types of animation that all blend together into this incredibly beautiful tapestry. That is something to really be admired. Um, if you're a Spider Man nerd like I am, the amount of Easter eggs in this film alone is staggering in the best way including the Spider-Man pointing meme. Uh, they found a way to work it in, and it actually it actually worked. I couldn't believe they found a way to make that work. Uh, Oscar Isaac kills it as, uh, as Spider-Man 2099, and this ends on a cliffhanger that I went, holy shit, I can't wait to see how this wraps up. Um, Haley Steinfeld for me, um, sup girl, uh, Haley Steinfeld for me, I think gives the best, voice acting uh, performance. Uh, Shamik Moore does an incredible job once again as Miles. Um, some incredible tension in this movie. Um, just, yeah, across uh, Jake Johnson being back again as uh, Peter B. Parker. He kills it. Um, just an absolute buffet if you're a Spider-Man fan. And just something that I found myself truly in awe of. Um I absolutely love this film. I, I love this film so much, and I've rewatched it. Um, I haven't rewatched it this month. I definitely will be rewatching it this month. I'm gonna have a day where I do uh, Black Panther, and then Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and then in that same week, I'm gonna have a day where I do uh, 
uh, Spider-Man um, across the Spider-Verse uh, and uh, into the Spider-Verse. But absolutely incredible film, and everyone who worked on it at Sony should be so proud of themselves. It just goes right back to what Del Toro said, that animation is so important, and it's a medium that should not be slept on. It's a medium that should be celebrated, and it should inspire. And if you watch this film, I don't see how you how you can't be inspired by it. Um, I absolutely love this film. So uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse uh, tied for my number 10. Um, the other film that I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw on uh, for my number 10, it's a directorial debut uh, by Cord uh, Jefferson. It's American fiction. Um, as a person of color, I have ranted uh, for years about Tyler Perry and how terrible he is and how problematic and toxic he is to not just the Black community, but the Black cinema. And this is a film uh, where Jeff- Jeffrey Wright, who plays his character Monk, he I felt so seen <laughs> watching this movie because he's fucking frustrated. He's like, I'm putting out great these great books that people aren't reading. And people are selling this, you know, these airport novels, basically this schlock, and they're being, you know, rewarded more. What the fuck? And it's a really deep conversation about art and how we perceive art and the conversations that we have around art and pretentiousness and, um, you know, and and, and talks that we have about art within the Black community. Um, I've talked about it, you know, I've talked about it on... uh, my social channels about how it still royally pisses me off that uh, Macklemore beat Kendrick Lamar <laughs> for best rap album, you know, for the heist over a uh, good kid, mad city, which, you know, what the fuck. And uh, I don't care what you Swifties say. 1989 is not a better album than to pimp a butterfly, not in this universe, not in the multiverse. <laughs> is that album better than to pimp a butterfly? Um, one of the best albums I've heard in my life. And the conversations that this film has about art, I just found truly inspired. And the fact that this is a first-time director, I so I actually originally, on my latest revision of my list, I had Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume 3 tied at my number 10. And it it killed me, but even though James Gunn, I think, has a perfect capper, for the end of his trilogy um, with the Guardians films, a first time director doing something this profound and this deep out the gate is something that needs to be celebrated. So like, I know people will watch Guardians of the Galaxy you, you, uh, volume three, you know what I mean? But for me, when I think about something that's going to really stick with me, something I'm going to be still having conversations about, you know, years from now, American fiction is going to be one of those films. Um, I'm so happy at Jeffrey Wright got his flowers and got his uh, Best Actor nomination. I'm so happy for Sterling K. Brown getting his Best Supporting Actor nomination. I know he already says that, you know, Rob Down Jr. is going to win and he's accepted it. I think there's a world where I, I, I really think Ruffalo is going to win. I think there's a world where Sterling K. Brown wins. So I wouldn't sleep on him as far as uh, potentially winning. But um, I absolutely, um, well, what beer? Um, I absolutely adore uh, Sterling K. Brown in this. Um, yeah, love this film. Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, um, uh, sup, ma'am. Uh, she's amazing in it. Um, not surprising. Uh, but um, I talked about it during my Oscar reaction, uh, my Oscar nomination reaction uh, breakdown. Uh, Erica Alexander not getting a Best Supporting Actress nomination, I think is a crock of shit. I think she gives a better performance than Emily Blunt does in Oppenheimer. And I was really bummed that she didn't get uh, props uh, for that. But she's incredible in this. And I really do hope that people in Hollywood go, oh, yeah, Erica Alexander's a great fucking actress. We should put her in more shit. Um, The chemistry that her and Wright have just leaps off the page. And Adam Brody. (laughs) Adam Brody is so great in this as well. I was really happy to see him. And while I've been hard on her, just because I'm just not a fan of a lot of stuff she's done, I'm going to go, I'm a, because it's Black History Month, I'm going to go back and I'm going to give Insecure um, another chance. I think Is Ray is fucking amazing in this movie. Um, she only has a couple, uh, she has a few scenes, but what she gets to do with those scenes, she maximizes her time. 
and I think she fucking crushes uh, every scene she's in. And there's a scene in particular with her and Jeffrey Wright near the end of the film. You'll know it when you see it. That I thought was just incredible, and it actually I actually had to pause the movie and actually rewind it. Um, I I love the scene that much, so I, I'm giving her props. I'm giving a secure another chance. God damn it. Um, but I, I, I love this movie and it's going to be something that um, I don't know if they'll do like a special edition or just a, you know, steel book or whatever. I will be buying this uh, as soon as I can. I want a physical copy of this to, to hold my hand, but I absolutely adore this movie. So uh, yeah. Um, so American fiction, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse type for my number 10. All right, uh, let me take a drink here. A little thirsty. Ah, that's the stuff. All right, so moving on to my number nine. Um, this is a movie that I saw um, that I saw. I watched with my partner uh, again during one of our movie nights, and wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. But I was so happy that this movie um, ended up being as great as it was, and ironically enough. I totally forgot about it, but um, uh, Kelly Freeman Craig, who um, wrote and directed it, uh, she also went ahead and wrote and directed my favorite film of 2016. Um, that was on my best of, which is The Edge of 17, starring Haley Steinfeld. Uh, my number nine is Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Um, so as y'all know, I, uh, you know, I'm on the Marvel payroll, according to some of y'all. Uh, <laughs> that's why I just, that's why I love Marvel so much. But, um, but I was such a fan of, uh, or am such a fan of Abby uh, Ryder Fortson. I think she's a very special young lady who's just going to keep finding her voice and will continue to improve. I understand why Feige and company were like, hey, let's make Catherine Newton, uh, you know, our new Cassie Lang. But after watching this, this is one of those times where I go, yeah, Marvel, you made a mistake. Um, she, this young woman is, is incredible. And the way that she portrays um, Margaret in this movie, it's such an amazing coming of age um, film. It's heartbreaking. It's sad. Um, you really just want to give her a hug throughout so much of it because she's struggling. Uh, she's struggling in the way that kids struggle. And while this isn't, um, they do a pretty, uh, this isn't set, you know, in like present day, this is one of those films where it's universal, where even if you're, uh, you know, an old fart like me, um, pardon me, this will take you back to when you were, you know, 12, 13, 14. And you're just going through those, those, awkward changes you know like like and just feeling like you're the only one who's going through these changes and, and feeling alone and feeling scared and feeling uh unsure about yourself and just all the things that come with you know going through puberty and growing up um she she nails it she absolutely nails all those feelings um in this two-hour film um kathy bates oh my god um I, I know we we talk about how great Kathy Bates is. I mean, Kathy Bates has been great for you know years. Whether it's you know whether it's Midnight in Paris, whether it's Misery, whether it's Revolutionary Road, whether it's The Water Boy. Yes, she is fucking great in The Water Boy. Uh, you know whether it's about Schmidt um, on the basis of sex. Uh, I, I could keep going. Fuck. Uh, you know uh, uh, even Bad Santa too. As as not great as Bad Santa too is, she's fucking hilarious in it. But um, her playing uh, Margaret's grandma, their their relationship is so fucking pure and kind, and it reminded me a lot of my uh, my grandma, uh, my grandma Nancy. Um, may she rest in peace. Where I just. I definitely got teary eyed. I, I I wept hard. I, I I won't even I won't lie to y'all. I cry. I've cried a lot more since I saw Paddington too. And I think that's a combination of you know getting softer in my old age slash you know PTSD from a COVID lockdown. But I, I I just love I love their relationship in here. And Rachel McAdams. Um, I I have to talk about Rachel McAdams. I think she got screwed. 
out of a Best Supporting Actress uh, nomination. Um, it really bothers me that she actually didn't get nominated for uh, for this because she deserved to to be. And I think that Rachel McAdams has been so great for so long, whether, again, it's Midnight in pa Paris, whether it's Mean Girls, whether it's Red Eye, um, whether it's Disobedience, whether it's Spotlight, whether it's Wedding Crashers, whether it's Southpaw, whether it's Eurovision, whether it's the that. Like, you see the pattern here? Uh, whether it's Morning Glory, because she's at, that's a really underrated fucking flick. Whether it's State of Play. Like, she has been amazing for, for so fucking long. And she deserved to have her, she still deserves to have her work um, properly uh, propped up and uh, celebrated. And so I, I I was really sad that she didn't get a nomination here. Um, I know everyone's like, Margot Robbie, but it, this is probably the one that, that hurt me the most. Um, just because uh, there's a scene where she's talking to Margaret about why she doesn't talk to her parents anymore. And that scene alone, I went, I put that scene up against America Ferrera's monologue. I put that scene up against any actress um, all year, uh, any scene with an actress all year. Um, she was, she was incredible. Um, and I'm so, I, I hope there's a sequel. I know it didn't do great at the box office, but I hope that streaming numbers helped it out. But they also didn't advertise this like at all. I don't think I saw a trailer for this until um, it hit streaming. So, pardon me. So, I really hope that people give this a chance. I think it's streaming on Peacock still. Um, if it's not, just buy it. Like, there's no way you won't like this movie. Um, this would actually be if you have, um, if you have younger kids, you know, and that like. 10 to uh, you could show this to a 10 year old if you if you have kids in that 10 to 14 range this would be a great companion piece with the uh, netflix's the babysitter's club i would actually do a double feature uh, of that and, and i know the babysitter's club's a show but the babysitter's club is a great show that you should you should have watched anyway um it would have gotten canceled if more people watched it but please check it out um are you there god to me margaret that's my number nine um yeah F uh, fucking great movie. All right, moving on to my number eight. Um, my number eight stars one of my favorite actresses uh, working right now. She is going to be in uh, The Last of Us season two, which great for her. Um, this really is a one woman showcase for her, and she fucking crushes it. My number, um, my number eight favorite film is No One Will Save You, which is directed by Brian uh, Duffield. Um, and <coughs> pardon me, and um, you know, Brian Duffield from uh, doing this uh, this film called Spontaneous. Which, if you haven't seen Spontaneous, check out Spontaneous. Uh, Spontaneous is fucking great. Um, that came out in 2020, but very simple, very Twilight Zone esque plot. Um, uh, Caitlin Dever, she plays a uh, she plays a character who is isolated from everyone in her town and has to deal with a alien home invasion. Very simple, very short, uh, very, very straight to the point. Um, but the way that this film tells such an incredible dialogue without really any words, I think there's maybe like 10 words spoken in the whole fucking film. It's so well done and it's so expertly crafted and where the film ends is such a uh, for me, that I just went, oh yeah, this is this is that sci-fi that makes you think. It's that sci-fi that makes you want to sit down and write something. Like I, I love this fucking movie, and considering the budget on it, I think was was like small. I think it was like five, ten million. But the way that um, the way that Dever carries her performance again without saying really a fucking word, it's just is it's inspired. And it's such a fun, it's a, it's a fun watch, but you feel the anxiety as you're watching it. Like the, the, the way they just ramp up that tension just a little more e each time. Um, and as these scenes continue, it, it's a great fucking movie. And, and if you haven't seen it, it's on Hulu now, please take the time to watch this shit. Um, I, I know that I'm not a big horror guy because, because again, I hate being fucking scared, but 
um, I would watch this. Uh, I, the way I watch this, I watch this with like the lights out and uh, and like my space light on um, with my cat um, and one of my cats. It was a fucking blast. So if you haven't checked it out, please do. It is well worth your time. Um, yeah, no one will save you. My number, my number eight. All right, so moving on to my number seven. Um, this is a uh, this is a foreign film, but it's a film that I think is just it's so expertly crafted as far as its tension, and it kept making me go, "Did they do it? Maybe they didn't do it. Maybe they did. Maybe they, I, I really kept going back and forth in my head, and the fact that the movie kept me guessing the way it did, I went huh okay i i, I i'm kind of loving this the more that i uh that i watch it it's a it's anatomy of a fall uh which is directed by uh, justine uh, triette um so i just gotta shout her out real quick as uh, sandra uh huler i believe how you say it holy shit um oh my god she's fucking amazing in this and so you, uh, most of you probably know the concept that a woman's husband dies and she's put on trial for his murder. And so it really is a big courtroom drama mixed with family drama mixed with um, her son who ends up having to take the stand, but he's blind. And so it, like, it, there's so many balls in the air that in a in the hands of a lesser director, the shit would just fall apart and just break at the seams. And yet, um, and yet, um, a Triet does an incredible job of keeping everything in focus, but knowing how to pull certain things out and then put certain things back in the forefront, and just kind of keep everything in in rhythm. Um, once there's a point where her son uh, takes the stand, and that scene in particular is one of my favorite scenes all year. Um, there, um, when, um, when, um, I'm blanking on the character's name, but when, uh, Sandra, uh, 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 Sandra, that's actually her name in the movie, if memory serves, but when Sandra takes a stand, the cross examination that she goes through, it's one of the most intense cross examinations I've seen in a film ever, honestly. Um, it's like a solid 10, 15 minute scene. And I was just sitting there going, holy shit, the whole time. And there were points where I actually had to pause and rewind what someone had said because I couldn't believe that some of the things that were being said were said. And I just found myself constantly on the edge of my seat. And like I said, the movie kept me guessing. I really didn't know if she did it or not. And the fact that it gave me that level of holy crap, um, that's something that really should be celebrated. So uh anatomy of a fall please check this out i don't think it's on digital yet um but um actually let me let me see is it oh no it is so you can uh yeah you can rent it um yeah y'all if you uh i'm personally i don't know when this is hitting oh yeah so you can rent it for six bucks and buy it for 14.99 um yeah check this out please like check this out as soon as you can but um i i love this movie absolutely love this movie and uh this again will be something i definitely end up picking up uh at some point so uh yeah anatomy of a fall that's my number seven uh all right i'm gonna go ahead and do my number six and then i'm gonna go ahead and take one more quick break before i get through my top five so um this film uh, I got to shout out my homie, Brandon. Uh, shout out to Brandon. Uh, he, uh, so I've talked about before, but I, I have this Facebook uh, movie nerd chat that I run. And um, and Brandon, um, homie, in that chat was like, dude, I saw this movie. I really think you would like it. You need to check it out. Like, please just like check it out. And I was like, all right, man, I, I, will, I, will, I will give it a shot. And that movie is Rye Lane, which is directed by Rain Allen Miller, a, a first time. Uh, this is her uh, feature film debut. And holy shit, if this is her floor, um, this young woman is going to be a powerhouse in in, Holly, in Hollywood. Um, this also stars two, uh, two very young uh, first time uh actors as far as in a feature film in a david uh 
David Johnson and Vivian uh, Opera, um, who play Dom and Yas, uh, respectively. And I've talked about this on the pod before, but y- you so rarely get black love films that are well executed and that don't feel pandering and that don't just kind of feel paint by numbers. And the way that this film is directed, it's directed like a uh, like a very coherent fever dream. And that's the best way I can <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. But this film is just beaming with personality just from the direction alone. It's beaming with personality. So just on just off the direction, I could already justify it being on my list. But then you get to uh, Dom and uh, Yaz's chemistry. These two leads fucking bring it. They know exactly how the dialogue should come off the page. They know exactly how to read it. And the more that you watch them together, the more you want them to make it. And Dom... I think we've all been through it. He's like in his early, uh, early twenties. Um, ignore my cats as they're, uh, as they're meowing at each other, but, uh, they, uh, he gets, he went through a really bad breakup and he's questioning himself as a person. He's questioning himself as a partner and he's just, he's struggling and he goes ahead and meets, uh, Yaz at this, uh, art, uh, art opening that his, uh, that his friend is throwing And it's really about them having this day together where maybe they fall for each other. Maybe they're both kind of healing through their uh, communication and confronting some things about themselves that they both need to confront. And by the time it got to the end of this movie, the fact that they were able to make something about waving, uh, whether you wave at ships or not, the fact that they were able to make that an emotional um an emotional point in this movie, I found myself just really in awe of, of how well executed this film is from start to finish. Um, and it's fucking funny too. I found myself laughing all the way through and, and like laughing and cheering. Um, it's one of my favorite soundtracks to the, the score fucking, just fucking slaps. Um, I really don't have a complaint about this movie. And I actually thought really hard about <laughs> if there were any complaints I could, I could bring against this. And I think it is a perfect rom-com. Um, I, I, if you're, you know, if you're like freshman year of college, especially, I think this is something that will really resonate um, with people between 18 to 24. I think that's like a perfect age uh, to be watching this, but I, I thought this movie was fucking excellent and it's something that um i'll probably i am gonna revisit uh this month for black history month i just rewatched i just watched it uh, like a month ago but um it's also a very quick watch it's 90 minutes and that is something hollywood wise i'm really happy that studios and companies are starting to realize that not everything needs to be two hours sometimes you can get your message across in 90 minutes or in you know an hour 40 and this movie, it's perfectly paced. When I was, when it actually ended, I was like, wow, that was 90 minutes because there's so much in this movie for 90 minutes. But I just, I adore this movie. So um, this is streaming on, uh, this is streaming on Hulu as well. So please check this out. It's well worth your time. Uh, Rye Lane, that is my number six. So, all right, y'all, I'm going to take one more quick break. And then um, I will be back with uh, my final, uh, my top five. So I will be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. And we're back. Uh, Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Thank you so much for enjoying, uh, hopefully, (laughs) enjoying the stream. So uh, before I get my top five, I'm just going to run back my uh, my 10 through 6. So tied for number 10, I had Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and American Fiction. At number 9, I had Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Number 8, I had No One Will Save You. Number 7, I had Anatomy of a Fall. And number 6, I had Rye Lane. So Moving on to my number five, I think this is one of the, it might, it's one of my, 
it's one of the funniest movies of the year. It might be the funniest movie of the year. I, I, I'd have to think about that. But um, it's it's an incredibly brilliant, well crafted, amazing film. Um, this director also directed a, a Shiva Baby. Um, my number five is Bottoms, which stars uh, Ao Itabri, um and uh, Rachel Sanat, sup girl to both of you. Um, so first off, I love them both so much. I, I haven't even watched the bear, but I watched a I watched AO on a, on Saturday Night Live. And I thought she was fucking hilarious. Plus, she's in theater camp, and I fucking love theater camp. Um I, I, I fucking love theater camp. And she's also uh April O'Neil in my in another movie that would be on my honorable mentions, uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Meet Mayhem, which by the way, that should have gotten the Oscar nomination over Elemental. I do not fucking understand how it didn't, outside of the fact that Disney is Disney. But seriously, people, this is why you need to watch fucking movies and not just go by brand. Um, anyways, but Bottoms, uh, it's about a, it's a movie about two uh, two uh, two women who go ahead and start a fight club as a way to go ahead and lose their virginity. Uh, to these cheerleaders um it's absolutely hilarious it's vulgar it's raunchy um i we uh, i didn't even talk about this uh actually i did talk uh wait did i talk about this maybe i didn't i don't think i brought up in my um oscar nomination discussion but i tweeted about it later uh on twitter i'm calling it twitter fuck you elon i'm not calling it x like a fucking goober but Marshawn Lynch should have gotten the best supporting actor nomination. He's fucking amazing in this. And if you haven't seen Marshawn Lynch in like a Brooklyn Nine Nine and uh, um, um, oh, what's the the uh, Will Arnett show, uh, Murderland, uh, Murderland, I think is what it's called. Um, he's hilarious. He's just a he's a very just naturally gifted um, comedic actor, and I just I, I loved him in this movie and i thought he was just i thought he was so goddamn funny and the way he plays off of a uh, sonat and uh Edibri is so goddamn funny um i i can't think of the guy oh, oh nicholas uh uh Galzine, who plays uh jeff uh he was in uh red white and royal blue um he was in purple hearts Ugh. um but he plays a perfect foil in jeff and just as a sports guy to have someone with their first name on the back of their jersey is just somehow extra douchey um <laughs> he's such a douchebag in the movie but um this is a perfect and i will be I was going to review this now, but to be honest, I'm probably going to wait uh, until Pride Month and review this. But this is a perfect, and I mean a perfect double feature with uh, um, with Booksmart. Um, if you wanted to go ham and do a triple feature, I would do triple feature of Bottoms, Ye uh, Yes, God, Yes, and Booksmart. I, I think you would have just an amazing day if you did all three of those films back to back to back. But... Um, it ends with one of my favorite third acts in a film all year. It's insane in the best way. And I've actually like the whole uh the whole Yas Queen has, is something that I've I I I don't like most of the time when it's said. There are exceptions. My 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 friend Lizzie says it whenever she says it, I'm like, okay, that's actually really cute. But most of the time I hear that and it just sends a shiver down my spine. But there's a girl here, here, here who yells "Yas Queen Slay," and I remember going, "Wow, that weirdly, that weirdly got me hyped." I, I, I have to give a lot of credit for the execution of that line. But uh, bottoms, it's streaming on. Oh, uh, I, I actually, I don't know where it's streaming. Actually, it might be streaming on. I can't remember if it's on. Oh, it's on MGM Plus. That's so fucking random. Um. Just buy it. Just buy it. It's great. It's well worth the time. And again, I think it's like 90... I think it's 90 minutes. Um, it's it's really... Yeah, it's an hour, 88 minutes. Like, it flies by. But it's a, it's a great fucking flick. So if you have not seen Bottoms, please check it out. It's well worth your time. Uh, so Bottoms, that's my number five. 
uh, moving on to my number four. Let's see here. Moving on to my number four. This was actually a very late entry. And admittedly, I have a uh, complicated... I, actually, I can't even say I have a complicated history with this director. Because most of their stuff, I actually really dig. Whether it's The Descendants, whether it's about Schmidt, whether it's Nebraska, which I fucking love. Um, I fucking hate downsizing. I will die on that hill. Downsizing fucking sucks. And if you like downsizing, I question your taste in film. That's how much I hate downsizing. Um, but I remember the first thing I saw that he did that I kind of went, all right, I, I might love this director, is uh, Matthew Broderick and um, Reese Witherspoon's election back in 99. And then he ended up doing Sideways. But uh, my number four is The Holdovers, starring Paul Giamatti. Um, Paul Giamatti is an amazing actor. And, and, and I think that he's hit that that gear of he's so great so often that we just kind of almost take it for granted, which we never should because artists can, you know, fall off and just never get back to where they were. Uh, look at Kanye. Um, but Paul Giamatti, I'm so grateful for this dude. Just, uh, you know, whether it's him and Straight Outta Compton, whether it's him in 12 Years a Slave, whether it's The Truman Show, whether it's Saving Private Ryan, whether it's uh, John Adams, um, whether it's San Andreas, which he's the best thing in San Andreas, um, whether it's Cinderella Man, um, he is just, he's an incredible, whether it's Big Fat Liar, he's great in Big Fat Liar, fuck y'all if you don't like Big Fat Liar, what you know about Big Fat Liar, uh, Paul Giamatti's great, and the way that he, um, the way that he speaks, um, as far as delivering his lines, playing, uh, Paul Hunt, uh, Hunnam, um, he is so goddamn pretentious, but he speaks like so many professors that I've met do speak, where he is like, he's so intelligent, but he is socially awkward to a point. And the more you learn about his character, more the more you realize, oh man, this guy is just, he has his own insecurities. He has his own things that he's gone through as far as being a professor and why he stayed at the school for so long. And I just love the way that they bring out kind of his story as far as where he is and why he's stayed there for so long. I think it's expertly told. Uh, Divine uh, Joy Rand uh, uh, Randolph, who uh, you know you know from the Lost City Office Christmas Party, uh, most likely Dolomite is my name. Um, the United States versus Billy Holiday, which I should watch that. I have not seen that yet. Um, She's this is a star making performance for, uh, from uh, from her, and will probably lead to an Oscar win for her, which will be well deserved because she's she's a powerhouse in this movie. Wait until the party scene with her, and that's all I'll say. Um, she's she's incredible, and I just I, I I want nothing but the best for her. She's she's so much fun, and she's so goddamn charming. I, I'm such a fan of hers, um, but I want to give. Props to uh, Dominic uh, Sessa, who this is his first. Uh, this is his first uh, acting role, and he crushes it. And he's acting alongside fucking Paul Giamatti, you know, award-winning Paul Giamatti. And he is not only holding his own; he is at his level. Um, and that's due to the incredible script by Alexander Payne. I, I, I got to give him credit for that, and the incredible direction and. Um, his character, uh, his character, Angus, when you find out more about him, you realize why this guy is so angsty and why he's so unsure of himself and why he's so angry. And you really sympathize with him in a way that I didn't think I was going to uh, at the beginning of the film. I thought he was just a little shit. But um, this film is expertly crafted. It's expertly told. And... Uh, an ending that I think some people will go, oh, but an ending that for me, I went, I feel really hopeful for everyone moving forward. And at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I think that's really all we can hope for is to have some hope that we can push forward. And I just, I, I love this film. Um, it's technically a Christmas film. So this will be a Christmas watch for me. This goes right there next to uh, Jingle All the Way for me. Those will probably be those will probably be the first two films I 
watch every Christmas moving forward um, or every holiday season moving forward. I, I just, I adore this film. So um, yeah, please watch this. It's on a, it's, it's on a Peacock. You can watch it there now. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's just over two hours. I want to say, I think it's about two hours, um, but it's, it's just, it's wonderful. Uh, it, it really is just a, wonderful film and something that i'm i'm so happy that i took the time to watch it's, okay it's two hours 13 and even at two hours 13 i never felt like it was dragging like i i, I think that it really does earn every minute of its runtime so yeah please check this out if you haven't uh the holdovers my number four all right so moving on to my number three um i'm a big fan of the actress who stars in this film I think that the director of this film is insane, but I mean, that's a compliment. Like their brain just works in this way that I, I would love to be able to sit down with them and just, and just pick their brain uh, artistically. But you know him from directing things like The Favorite, uh, The Lobster, uh, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. My number three favorite film is Poor Things, uh, directed by Yorgos uh, Latimos. Um, which stars uh, Emma Stone, who, speaking of Paul Giamatti in the sense of people that I think we take for granted, uh, Superbad, Corella, Birdman, Crazy Stupid Love, The Favorite, Easy A, Zombieland, uh, Zombieland, Double Tap, uh, Friends with Benefits, uh, The House Buddy, Battle of the Sexes, Maniac, uh, The Croods, Gangster Squad. Um, she just... Emma Stone kicks ass. Like, do you hear all those movies I just ran down? Plus, she has an amazing cameo in Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. I fucking love Emma Stone. Um, I love her so much, I just skipped Aloha. Oops. Um, but Emma Stone is one of those actresses. Um, she gives everything to this movie. And I know it's going to sound weird to put it like this, but I think you all know what I mean. I actually like the fact that this film is a rated R film. Like, there is sex. There's a lot of sex in this movie. And there's actual, like, there's boobs and dong. Like, this movie does not discriminate. You you get to see it all. But Emma Stone di dives headfirst in this film with reckless abandon in a way that I was shocked by. Because I really didn't hear anything about this movie except that it's going to kind of shock you. And I was like, well, you know, whatever. How's it going to shock me? And I felt myself shocked. I was actually like, oh, all right, fair play. Fair play, movie. Um, it's so goddamn funny. Um, it's dark when it needs to be. Um, her portrayal of Bella is such a incredible, um, really feminist journey as far as her learning how the world works, um, what her place in the world is, how uh, certain forces of the world will keep her from from reaching her true potential and living her life the way uh, the way that she sees fit, um, who she can trust, who has her best interests at heart. Like it's just it's a wonderful just microcosm of so many different ideas and so many different things clashing together, and yet um, and yet Yorgos never loses the threads. He always seems like he knows exactly what he's doing as far as keep every keeping everything um, at play. There is one plot element, I think you all will kind of know it when you see it, that is introduced that I think kind of just goes, eh, that that's really my only gripe, but it's not enough in any way to derail the movie because the rest of the film is so goddamn fucking incredible. Um, Willem Dafoe as kind of the uh, the evil inventor uh to Bella as a surrogate dad, uh, Godwin Baxter. Willem Dafoe is just fucking great. I, I mean, I know we always say that, but Willem Dafoe is so goddamn funny in this and very, like, very dark in this movie. But the way that him and Emma Stone play off each other is so goddamn cool. It's so... It, it's endearing and yet creepy at the same time, which is a hell of a, hell of a balance to strike. Um... Mark Ruffalo, as I mentioned earlier, as a Duncan, uh, Duncan uh, Wetterburn, which is one of the coolest fucking names I've heard <laughs> in a movie in so goddamn long. Mark Ruffalo's in this bag in this movie. He is an asshole. He is charming. He's a delinquent. Um, he's um, 
very horny. Um, uh, uh, Mark Ruffalo is everything in this movie. And the conversations that him, uh, that Duncan and Bella end up having are some of my favorite dialogue in anything all year. And I found myself just laughing and crying because I was laughing so hard at points. Um, I want to shout out two more people in this movie who I don't think are getting their, um, who I don't think are getting their, uh, their flowers enough. Uh, Rami, uh, Rami Yosef, who, you know, from uh, his show, um, uh, from his show, Rami, um, which if you have not seen that, please check that out. Um, he's excellent in this movie. Um, and him and Defoe, a lot of their dialogue is just, is sparkling. Um, but I thought he, I thought he was excellent in this movie. And I was so happy to see him um, get the shine um, and get that rub uh, acting, along, uh, acting alongside these two, you know, Oscar winners. And then uh, I got to shout out uh, Gerard, uh, Gerard Carmichael. Uh, I've talked about on the pod before that I was a big fan of the Car- Carmichael show. I still think NBC are fucking crooks for how they handled the Carmichael show as far as just never advertising something that that was that brilliant. Um, but um, if you haven't checked out uh, Gerard Carmichael's uh, uh, Raffinell, we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and be reviewing that. Um, at some point uh, this month for Black History Month, but he is absolutely incredible in this movie. And there's this dialogue, this monologue that he has with Emma Stone, um, that he has with her about her place in the world that I found so profound that I was like, wow. Like, I actually rewound um, the whole monologue that he gives with her. And they have a couple scenes together that I just went, yep, this is fucking great. So, If you've not checked out Poor Things, I don't think it's out yet. I don't think. Um, Yeah, it doesn't look like it's uh, like it's out yet. So I'm not sure when it's gonna hit um, digital. But um, actually, let's uh, let me take a let me take a uh, let me take a quick look uh, if I can find that. But um, let's see. So I mean, it should be any time now probably be later this month i would say so uh because it is a, a searchlight production so it'll probably i'd say maybe the end of the month um it'll probably be on hulu potentially so just kind of keep an eye out for that um it might hit tuesday for all for all the fuck we know but um keep an eye out because it's definitely something that y'all should watch if you haven't seen it yet um if it's playing a theater near you and you have the time uh definitely go check it out but Absolutely love this movie. Cannot wait to watch it again. Uh, Poor Things. It's my number three. All right. So moving on to my number two favorite film. Um, I So I'm going to be honest. I can't believe this film was my number two. And this is a perfect reason why it's important to go ahead and watch as much as you can. Because um, I was lucky enough to get... um, I was lucky enough to, uh, to get a screener set from uh, Neon. And so I was flipping through it and just kind of going like, all right, what do I want to watch? And I flipped and I landed on this film. And I went, huh, this this looks interesting. And again, if this is why I always tell people, like, it's, it's good to go through, just like go on IMDb, go on Rotten Tomatoes, go on you know, whatever uh, movie source site that you prefer. But it's always nice to kind of make a list of things that you think you might want to watch um, and just kind of keep up on what is coming out because you never know what sort of hidden gems you could have potentially unearthed just by, you know, taking the extra, you know, bit of time to go ahead and do a little research. Uh, My number two favorite film of this year is Robot Dreams, which is directed by Pablo uh, uh, Berger. Um, so this film does not have a line of dialogue in it. It is straight up silent film. It is just the animation. And I cannot express to y'all how hard this movie made me cry. I pretty much cried throughout the whole film. Uh, the film is about a, um, you know, I'm going to read the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read the, uh, letterboxed. Uh, synopsis. Uh, Dog, 
an actual dog, lives in Manhattan, and he's tired of being alone. One day, he decides to build himself a robot, a companion. Their friendship blossoms until they become inseparable to the rhythm of 80s New York. One summer night, dog with great sadness is forced to abandon his uh, abandoned robot. Will they ever meet again? And honestly, it's a film that I was on the edge of my seat for the whole time. I, I couldn't believe how emotionally invested I got in this movie. And the animation style, it's very... Um, um, oh, what's that? Um, I'm blanking on the Adult Swim show. And I'm... I'm um, um, uh, Tuca and Birdie. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it, it very much reminded me, like inspired in that art type style. Um, but the animation here is fucking gorgeous. It is beautiful, and just the more I kept watching the movie, the more I found myself just kind of in awe of it. Um, it's an hour forty two, so it's a quick watch too. But the score in this movie is next level. Um. Pablo Berger also wrote uh, also wrote the film as well, but I, I cannot I cannot express enough how much y'all need to watch this movie. Um, I don't even want to say anything else about it because I really don't want to spoil anything for you. But it's some of the best use of music I've heard in the film in the last three years. Um, it's very Scott Pilgrim esque in that way, in the way that it uses its music. Um, there, there's nothing like this film. It is truly unique. It's uh, truly one of a kind. And I just, I can't wait to own this movie. Um, I don't think um, it had a very limited release back in November, but uh, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think you can even buy it yet. But uh, please keep an eye out on this movie. Like, seriously, please keep an eye out on this movie because the moment that you watch it, um, I think you'll be better for it. And I, it really says a lot about friendship and about, like, the people that we let into our lives and just being a decent person overall. So I just I, – I love this movie so, so much. And I have true admiration Um for uh pablo berger and i just i i could not believe how well executed this film was um if i ha if i was wearing a hat i'd tip it to neon and to uh pablo berger um i know i've talked about this at length before on the pod but this is why disney this is why you don't want anyone to have a monopoly on anything because if disney was the only game in town this movie never sees the light of day um, I would put this up there with Wally. -E. This is as good as Wally -E for me. I know some people will go, that's nuts. No, this is as fucking good as Wally. -E. I will plant my flag um on that statement. I, I love this movie. And like I said, I was crying, I was cheering, I was talking to the screen like a black person at a Tower Perry film. I I just I love this fucking movie. So please check it out. When um when this uh, comes out on digital, I'm sure it'll hit digital. You know, a uh, month or two. Um, most stuff tends to hit uh, digital right before the Oscars, so I'm sure it'll be like early March at the latest. But check this out as soon as you can. Um, it's an incredible film, um, and you can watch it with your kids too. I, I would say, I think if you watch this with uh, actually, I don't even know if this is rated. I think it's like PG. Um. Actually, let me see. I actually don't know if this is rated. Um, oh, it's say not rated. So, I mean, I think you watch this with your kids because there's nothing like really, there's nothing like gross or like sexual or anything. Um, but yeah, please check this out when it comes out. Uh, Robot Dreams. That's my number two. So, I'm gonna run through my list one more time before I get to my number one. So let's run it back. Uh, or as Miles Morales would say, let's do this one more time. So, my uh, tied for my number 10, I had Spider Man Across the Spider Verse and American Fiction. Number nine, I had Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Number eight, I had No One Will Save You. Number seven, I had Anatomy of a Fall. Number six, I had Rye Lane. Uh, number five, I had Bottoms. Number four, I had The Holdovers. Number three, I had Poor Things. And number two, I have Robot Dreams. And my number one favorite film of the year is something that I truly was not expecting to be my number one favorite film. 
I will uh, I will uh, shout out uh, my boy uh, Brandon again, and then uh, I'm gonna shout out uh, the homie Nick over at the Afternoon Tune because um, they both were speaking so highly about this movie and were like, "Guys, like you have to go see this." And I'm not even a huge fan of this property, but it's something that I like. I wouldn't saw this on a Wednesday morning at uh, nine o'clock a.m. Uh, no, nine thirty. So at nine thirty a.m. and I actually was going to go see Aquaman in, in the Lost Kingdom after this. And I was so emotional, emotionally just like kind of devastated that I that I just I didn't want to see anything else. I kind of wanted to go home and hold my cats. Um, my number one favorite film of 2023 is Godzilla Minus One, directed by uh, uh, Ta- Takashi uh, Yamazaki. Holy shit. So. Um, I'm not a huge Godzilla fan. Um, I thought the 2014 version of Godzilla, I think it falls apart the moment Brian Cranston dies. I think that um, uh, Kong Skull Island is still the American standard as far as a monster film um, for, for, for the ones that they've done. I thought Godzilla vs. Kong uh, or Godzilla King of the Monsters fine and then um and then i thought godzilla vs kong was fun but you know human characters you don't give a shit about this shows uh right there of kong skull island you can have human characters that fucking work in one of these and i don't even want to get too much into the plot but of course godzilla shows up because why wouldn't he but the tension that this movie has, the way that this film ramps up the tension, the way that whenever Godzilla shows up, you are instantly afraid. Um, I think Godzilla is kind of like Wolverine in the sense that people almost made Godzilla too cool. And you're supposed to be afraid of Wolverine. You're supposed to be afraid of Godzilla. And anytime Godzilla even, like, you see a bit of a tail or anything, I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, oh, no, run. Run, Godzilla's right around the corner. Godzilla is terrifying this movie and the story that this tells um, of a uh, uh, Kochi who's played by uh, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 Yunosuke uh, uh, Kamiki. Uh, oh, they, uh, oh, they did voice work for spirited away. Of course they did. That's God, God damn it. Um, and for the sick world of, oh, wow. Okay. Um, but, their performance in this movie as a um as a um oh my gosh um i i i'm i'm told i'm totally blanking wow never mind uh um as a uh, bomber um um i can't i can't think of the term um is it uh yamakazi Yam- uh i i uh i i'm, I'm totally blanking Never mind, you know, uh, Kamikaze. There we go. Kamikaze Bomber. Um, that plot line has so much emotional weight to it that I was just sitting there going, wow, I can't believe they're really making this hit in this way. And the movie just, it's so human. And it, and one thing about Godzilla that I really think that people just always forget about is the incredible giant, literally and figuratively, uh, metaphor for war and how war destroys us and makes us less human and the way that they weave that story in w- with the Godzilla film is just it's fucking nuts to me and it it never feels like they're pandering or like they're abandoning the Godzilla bit it always feels like they're keeping both those things in focus and holy shit just whenever Godzilla shows up it is terrifying it is dark um when Godzilla ends up in in uh in japan holy shit like it is it is unfortunate for everyone involved but um i i don't really want to say anything else about the movie and potentially give shit up so i'm gonna just actually stop there but what i will say is um there's a there's an actress uh um mina uh uh minami uh, ha- uh hamabi is what i'm gonna go with um who plays uh, Nariku, her arc in particular, too, is something that I just found myself crying over. 
And the last lines of dialogue that are spoken in this movie made me cry all over again. Um, I never expected to be this emotional about a Godzilla film, but um, and that's why I compare it to Kong Skull Island in the sense of uh, John C. Riley's character's arc in there is so well handled that you're just like, wow, I'm emotionally invested in this because of them. Everyone, every human in this movie, you are invested in. You care about their journey. You want to see them be okay and not get killed by this giant fucking monster. Um, the film does an incredible job with tension. Uh, the visual effects, holy shit. Um, if there's one Oscar that should be a lock, it should be visual effects for, for Godzilla minus one. And look, this is a reason right here why Oppenheimer didn't make my list. The fact that this film addresses war better than a film that's about the atomic bomb. Mm. So I, I just, I adore this film so, so much. I really have true admiration for this film. It, uh, it's not out yet on digital or anything, but the like I will be buying, I don't know if there's going to be a steel book for this, but I will be, I will be patiently waiting for a steel book on this or a, a physical copy of this if there's a special edition i'm buying the fuck out of it uh and again i am not a huge godzilla fan but yeah if, if this director does more godzilla movies i am there day one with a godzilla shirt on and godzilla mask on i i fucking love this movie and i cannot wait to show uh to show my partner this film um we just watched kong skull island because she'd never seen it and she adored it and i cannot wait to this is a perfect double feature with kong skull island like i i cannot wait to rewatch this um but yeah i seriously i again if i had a hat i would be tipping it to everyone in this movie um the score to the score feels epic it feels dark it feels frantic um i i love this movie i love this movie so so much so Godzilla minus one, that is my number one favorite film of 2023. Um, everyone, thank you so, so much uh, for taking the time to join me on the stream today. Uh, I'm going to be back on Monday, as I mentioned, at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Super Bowl and uh, giving my thoughts on the game and talking about the commercials and all that jazz. And uh, I will be reviewing, um, I'm going to be reviewing an episode of Atlanta uh, for the Black Cinema Showcase. Uh, next week, I will be reviewing either, I I'm still figuring out, I'm either going to be reviewing uh, Moon Girl and Double Dinosaur Season 2 um, or Watchmen, uh, the TV series. Um, either way, both those will get reviewed by the end of the month. But I'm real excited to bring those reviews to y'all. And then um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll have reviews up for uh, Malcolm X, uh, Waves, uh, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, and uh, Sorry to Bother You uh, as well. So uh, keep keep an eye out on the stream and keep an eye out on, on uh, my socials for when all that stuff will, uh, will drop. Um, as far as my socials, uh, subscribe to the show on YouTube at The Real Pineapple. Give the video a thumbs up. It definitely helps me out. Um, just search The Real Pineapple. That's R-E-E-L Pineapple, and you'll find me on there. You can find me on Blue Sky at realpineapple.bsky.social. Uh, got a question for the show? Just want to say hi. Got a review request? Shoot me an email at uh, jhunter at therealpineapple.com. You can follow me on TikTok as well as Instagram at jhunterrealpineapple. Uh, you can follow me on Letterboxd. Uh, I'm getting more active on there. You can follow me on there at uh, Black Shazam. And you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash therealpineapple. And uh, like, share, subscribe, please. It definitely helps the podcast out. You can find me on uh, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneUp, and Samsung Podcasts, to name a few at The Real Pineapple. Uh, thank you so much again for listening, y'all. Thanks so much for checking out the stream. I will uh, be back, as I mentioned, on Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, to talk about the Super Bowl and uh, 
and uh, commercials and the game and all that jazz. And then I will be on the afternoon tune tomorrow, right after the game as well, to give my uh, my quick thoughts. Uh, you can find um, the afternoon tune at twitch.tv slash the afternoon tune. Go ahead and subscribe there so you'll be able to know when I'm uh, live tomorrow. But everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, and thank you for your support. Never forget, as always, to keep it real.